Hello, and welcome to Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church here in Battle Creek, Michigan, where Timothy Troxler is pastor. My name is Cassandra Portis, and today we will be discussing how spiritual knowledge helps us to meet the marks of a mature faith. As we look at the theme Macedonia has for the year of 2021, the marks of a mature faith, James 2 and 17 says, faith without works is dead. And then we look at the supporting scriptures found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. For this very reason, applying your diligence to the divine promises, make every effort in exercising your faith to develop moral excellence and in moral excellence, knowledge, insight, or understanding, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, steadfastness, and in your steadfastness, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly affection, and in your brotherly affection, develop Christian love, that is, learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do things for their benefit. For as these qualities are yours and are increasing in you as they grow toward your spiritual maturity, they will keep you from being useless and unproductive in regard to the true knowledge and the greater understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is blindsided, closing his spiritual eye to the truth having become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth and will live a life that leads others away from sin. There are five marks I want us to look at and see if we meet these marks. The first mark, when stretched, my faith won't break. The second mark, when pressed, my faith won't fail. The third mark, when expressed, my faith won't explode. The fourth mark, when questioned, my faith won't cower. And the fifth mark, when distressed, my faith won't panic. I'm going to show you how knowledge will help us meet these marks. Webster's Dictionary defines knowledge as facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education, the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Number two, awareness or familiarity gained by experience of a situation or a fact. However, the spiritual definition of knowledge refers to examples, truths, and commands that God wants us to know, believe, and obey. I'm going to give you five commands God gave me to help us meet the marks we have outlined above. The first thing we must do is we must long for and boldly ask God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. In the Amplified Versions of James chapter 1, verses 5 through 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or a circumstance, he is to ask of God, who gives to everyone generously without rebuke or blame, and, will be, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom and faith without doubting. God is willing to help us, for the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. We do this by praying for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's word. 
I pray for wisdom and knowledge and understanding before I read the word of God and for him to reveal to me how he wants me to apply it to my life. Psalms 119 and 66 says, teach me good judgment and knowledge for I have believed thy commandments. We want to have good judgment and knowledge. In Proverbs 2 and 1, Solomon says that we are to cry for understanding. Jesus said, it is when we hunger and thirst for righteousness that we shall be filled. And that's found in Matthew 5 and 6. It is when we cry for understanding that it will be found. In Chronicles, or 2 Chronicles 1, verses 10 through 11, Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge to rule over the people of God that God had gave him to rule over as king and not riches, wealth, or honor. God blessed Solomon with riches, honor, and wealth that no other king has ever had. Secondly, we must actively seek to grow wiser. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We must seek to know God. He must be the center of our life. Proverbs 1, 5 and 7 says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. We gain wisdom and knowledge, or we gain wisdom by studying the word of God, being around wild, wise people. In Matthew 7 and 7, God says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And James 3 and 17 says, tells us that the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceably, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The third mark, or the third command says, we must pray for others to grow wiser. Colossians 1.9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Paul prays that the Colossians would know the will of God and walk worthy of him, that they would be fruitful and strengthened with his might, that they would be patient and full of joy. In Philippians 1 and 9, Paul, so, Paul also prayed that the love of the Philippi, Philippians would abound more and more. This is what we should be praying for others. God wants us to disciple others, and some change only comes through fasting and praying. Pray until something happens. Number four, we must put our faith, hope, and trust in God. James chapter one in its entirety outlines how to put your faith in God. James explains that we will enter into diverse temptations, but he says we must, not, we must count it all joy because the trying of our faith is going to work to establish patience. And it says if you lack wisdom, he says ask for it in faith and God will give it to you. When you endure temptation and when you are tried, you will receive the crown of life which is a promise from God for those who love him. We must be doers of the word. Proverbs 3 and 5, 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. 2 Samuel 22 and 31 says, 
As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all that trust in him. Psalm 71 and 1 says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Never let, never be put to confusion. Or it says, let me never be put to confusion. Everything we need is in God. Trust him. Number five, we must teach others from God's word. Second Timothy 2 and 2 says, And what you have heard from me in the presence of my witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. When we accepted the Lord Jesus as our personal Savior, we became disciples for Christ. It is our job to teach others how to live the word of God. If we teach the word, it will accomplish what God sent it out to do. If you can't speak it, live it. Teaching is done in all forms. God says, spread the gospel and let the world know that Jesus is the great I am. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the light. He is the bread in a starving land. He's the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. He wants to save your soul. If we exercise these five commands that were outlined, we will be able to meet the marks outlined. The number one, when stretched, my faith won't break. When pressed, my faith won't fail. When expressed, my faith won't explode. And when questioned, my faith won't cower. And when distressed, my faith won't panic. Thank you for tuning in to week three of our Marks of a Mature Faith Workshop. I hope you were blessed by this lesson. Please tune in next week for lesson four on self-control. Thank you and have a blessed day.